<laughs> everyone, it's me. And today, do you want some snacks? Candy for all. Hmm. Hmm. Pet. <gasps> Cannibalism week. Oh, Matthew, what? What did you say? Cannibalism what? week. Ugh, go back to sleep. You're having a weird dream. <laughs> A nightmare! It can't be a dream, it's a nightmare! Gosh! Come on, Matt Pat! Come on! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory! <coughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome <laughs> to Food Theory! I'm sorry. The show that melts your face, not your hand. Theorists, it is cannibalism week here on all three channels. No, seriously. All three episodes released within minutes of each other, all with a theme of cannibalism. You know that this video came out in the year 2021 and run out is in the year 2022. It happens in the game tierists and the film tierists and the food tierists. Awesome. Gotta admit, it started as a joke during a production meeting, and then I just said, you know, why not? And everyone else responded, because cannibalism. But I ignored him and forced this to go through, and now we're here doing three episodes all about eating members of your own species. TLDR, I am in a weird mental place. Anyway, for our second ever three-way collab across our channels, after, of course, our KFC trilogy from earlier this year, I knew that I had to talk about the M&Ms here on Food Theory. After all, the walking, mm. talking M&M spokes candies have been making jokes towing the line of cannibalism for decades now. Check out my Halloween costume. Ooh, what are you going as? A cannibal. <laughs> oh! <laughs> ha, see what I mean? Funny stuff there, M&M's. Very amusing. Oh, here's another classic. You don't eat your own kind. It's unnatural. Here, give me this. Ooh, I like crispy. Uh, another PG-rated cannibalism joke. Mmm, marketing at its finest. M&M's oh. does it again. Let's watch one more, shall we? And here to help us launch this delicious product is the newest member of our team, the hazelnut spread M&M Spokes Candy. Hey! <gasps> what? Uh, wait, for, for some reason I don't remember this one. You're telling me that they actually ate the new Spokes Candy? You <gasps> ate the new Spokes Candy? Not all of him. Well, this went in a direction I didn't expect. Like, I thought the M&Ms were cannibals in a jokey, jokey, wink, wink, nudge, nudge kind of way. Like, oh, look at them. They're eating the candy versions of themselves. Haha. <laughs> but, like, the commercials just come right out and say it here. They ate one of their own kind. Definitively. I mean, I figured I'd swoop in, prove M&Ms are cannibals, drop a few Marshall Mathers puns, and then be on my way. But how am I supposed to theorize for an entire episode about something they've outright been putting into their ads for years? I mean, the definition for cannibalism couldn't be any more black and white. It's, quote, the practice of eating the flesh of one's own species. And yeah. that's exactly what these candies are doing here. Yep, think about it. It's something like humans eating humans, or maybe birds eating birds. Or, uh, oh no, the same kind of birds, la. Or maybe like a dog eating god. Drrr, sorry, dog eating dog. <laughs> that literally just say dog eating god. <laughs> What the? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I know of gods like uh, Xiao Tian Quan, uh, or like Inu. <laughs> I'm sorry, Inu <laughs> Yasha. I was, I was about to say like that. different types of M&Ms are different species, right? Right? You know, come to think of it, what parts of the M&M spokes candies are actually flesh? Are huh. any parts of them technically flesh? I mean, we talked about this with the Kool-Aid man. He's the glass pitcher and not the juice held within. So mm -hmm. what are the M&M spokes candies then? Are they actual living creatures or might it be more like a Toy Story 3 scenario? Like when Mr. Potato Head's accessories bring an inanimate tortilla to life. Hold on, let me go oh. watch every Every single 3D animated M&M's commercial from the last three decades real quick. Yep, okay, yep. Whoa, what is going on there? Yeah, you know what? Change of plans, friends. There's just too many questions floating around the M&M spokes candy universe, and it's high time that somebody got themselves some answers. So I'll do it. I'm gonna take the case. Get ready to taste justice, friends, because today's food theory is exploring what the M&M's actually are and whether any of them have actually committed the crime of cannibalism. Yes, this is a real video that you clicked on and are about to watch. And yes, this is my job and I take it very seriously. And yes, oh wait, no, please don't click away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, please don't click away. Don't, 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 don
serious enough to design a special event three episode crossover all about cannibals. What is wrong with me? Oh, it has been such a long 10 years. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, before we go any further, we need to talk spokes candy anatomy. Exactly which mm. parts of a spokes candy's body are and are not flesh. At a glance, it seems like an easy question to answer. The colored M&M area is delicious candy flesh, and then their limbs are made out of some kind of tan, non-chocolate flesh. And finally, their gloves and shoes are clothing. And I agree, those assumptions about spokes candy anatomy made sense if you've seen certain M&M commercials. Like the oddly racist one where a tribal M&M on an island wears no shoes or gloves. That right there is proof that those items are removable clothing. And then there's the whole slew of ads in which M&Ms get bites taken out of their bodies. Proof that their bodies are in fact edible. But when you watch every M&M commercial in existence like I did, you start running into ads that destroy everything that you thought you knew about Spokes Candy Anatomy. Like, but stop for a moment for us, stop for a moment for us. You do recognize that it's just fictional advertisements, right, Matt Pat? I'm sorry. This. <laughs> Oh, it is such a cursed image. I, I don't know whose kink it is to watch anthropomorphized candy undress, but yep, it's there, giving us the unexpected truth that the spokes candy's shells are removable clothing. And this is actually well established in the commercials. We see it again and again and again and again, and okay, you get the point. This, of course, means that M&Ms aren't really different colors. They just like to dress up in different colored outfits. Their skin, as it were, is actually the layer of milk chocolate under that removable shell armor. Which oh. seems pretty reasonable, given the fact that M&M spokes candies refer to themselves as naked whenever they're caught without their shells. I'm naked! I mean, I guess I'm a little surprised that all this nudity is allowed to air on network television uncensored or whatever, but I guess I can accept it. Anyway, that solves all the questions that we had regarding the flesh, so now we can move along. <laughs> Holy no! Oh, what the heck? Oh, it, oh, what is this? Editors, <laughs> stop the video. We're gonna have to unpack this, because here we've been led to believe that the chocolate is the m and skin, but in this one commercial, we see one, that the chocolate can be removed as clothing, and two, what the FCC actually cares about pixelating, is this. In this French commercial, which is a follow-up to their Australian strip poker commercial, we see that the peanut is the actual nude part of the M&M. I don't want to show my, you know, peanut. Theorists, do you understand what we've just uncovered, aside from Yellow's Privates? This is proof that the Spokes Candy's milk chocolate is also not a part of their core essence, which makes no sense until you look a bit closer and start to see everything line up. We see in numerous commercials that Spokes Candies oh. can feel things like heat and pain, but the thing is, they only really seem to feel those sensations with their limbs. Bites are constantly being taken out of the M&M Spokes Candy's quote-unquote bodies in these commercials, and yet even when they have a huge chunk of chocolate missing from their heads or their butts, they're not especially phased. They continue their chit-chat. They continue walking around. They are just so nonchalant about whatever physical pain they're in or whatever chunk of their body is missing, which leads me to believe that a chunk of their body isn't missing. Theorists, all of this evidence supports the idea that it isn't just the candy shell that's edible removable clothing. The milk chocolate underneath is edible removable clothing too. And this, of course, leads us to a bigger, potentially terrifying question. What then do these spokes candy creatures actually look like underneath their clothing. Something like this, perhaps? I promise this isn't just me trying my best to give you all nightmares. We actually have canonical insight into what the insides of M&M spokes candies look like. Take this commercial where Orange undergoes an operation to change him from crispy M&M to pretzel M&M. There is no way that you're putting a giant pretzel inside me! Listen, buddy, I'm not too thrilled about Ooh, this. Oh my gosh. And thanks to that operation, we get a glimpse into what's going on inside Orange's body. Human-like bones in his human-like legs and an mm -hmm. actual pretzel embedded inside his shell. This, of course, means that when you take away all the clothing, edible and otherwise, Orange's body looks like this, a series of disconnected limbs and facial features. Perhaps there are some nerve strands connecting them considering that nerves don't show up on x-rays, but I'm not so sure. Spokes candies are able to move their free-floating eyebrows without problems, so that could very well apply to the rest of their body parts too. But you must recognize that this is just a fictional world, a commercial cutter, and everything. Come on, so maybe magic? Isekai magic? <laughs> 
I'm sorry. But what this means is that yellow, the peanut M&M, looks a little something like this. Blue, the almond M&M, looks similar. And the three milk chocolate spokes candies of red, brown, and green are the most bizarre of all. So, having established all of that, we now turn to the question of cannibalism. You saw what was left of the hazelnut spread spokes candy. Nothing but his clothes and a few stray crumbs. They definitely ate him, but was it cannibalism? Because remember, cannibalism is the practice of eating the flesh of one's own species. And ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the anatomy of these spokes candies proves that they are indeed different species. For this proof, we need to look no further than phylogenetics, the study of the evolutionary history and classification of different organisms. Seriously, you're going to phylogenetics for a fictional, fictional character. Fictional characters, sorry. What? By considering all the known evidence about an organism, scientists are able to place it within a chart that shows its evolutionary lineage. From there, organisms are oh classified into kingdoms, genuses, species, etc., etc., based on similar traits. Ooh. How does the real-life study of phylogeny help us with our fictitious M&M &M classification, you ask? Well, as we saw in that earlier commercial... You don't eat your own kind, it's unnatural. Here, give me that. Ooh, I the M&M's see other flavors of M&M's as not their own kind, implying oh. that they may very well be different species. And the phylogenetics backs this up. Because our spokes candies actually have real life plant material inside of them, thanks to phylogenetics, we know that almonds and peanuts come from different plant species. Same with the wheat that's used to make the pretzels. Same with the hazelnut used to make hazelnut spread. These plants are designated as different species in real life. Therefore, our M&M spokes candies, whose DNA literally includes the DNA of said plants, should be considered considered a different species as well. And yes, m and spokes candies do canonically have DNA. That would be your positive DNA test right there, I would think. So what does this mean about our candy cannibals? Well, Blue, the almond m and is in the clear. We know he ate the hazelnut spread spokes candy, but since they're different species, this can't be considered actual cannibalism. Same goes for the chocolate green m and Hazelnut spread m and have a spread inside the milk chocolate, thereby making it a different species. Brown, mm -hmm. also innocent. Across all commercials, she has not once seen eating a non-living M&M. But what about red, yellow, and orange, who are all seen eating their own kind in that commercial starring Kronk? They've got to be guilty, right? Not necessarily. Remember, this isn't their body, this is. When you strip away the candy coating and the milk chocolate clothes, there's nothing but human-like limbs and facial features. That means that they actually share no common flesh with M&M's candy, a candy made of chocolate in a shell. When he eats a regular old M&M from a bag, these guys are just essentially eating the same material that their clothes are made of. And eating your clothes, certainly weird, but you can't tell me it's cannibalism, and you can't tell me it's unethical. Other True, you must recognize that um, clothing can be edible as well. Have you seen those kind of hats, like, made out of fruits? Like, there's apples, grapes, bananas, so on and so forth, or as a hat. Yeah, those, like, Okay, edible hats. Literally edible hats. Otherwise, I would eat my hat, and in doing so, create an ethical paradox in your mind. So, there you have it, friends. People may call the M&M spokes candies cannibals. Heck, they even call themselves cannibals from time to time. But the fact of the matter is, they aren't, and they shouldn't be punished for it. Should they be mm. punished for other stuff? Oh, most certainly. Guys, they killed and ate the hazelnut spread spokes candy. I mean, just because it technically isn't cannibalism doesn't mean it isn't murderous and depraved. So, yeah, send them to prison. Even I'm not going to defend that sort of behavior. But hey, that's just a theory. One cannibalism theory here on Cannibalism Weekend. Theorists, I hope you enjoyed this sugar-coated cannibalism episode. If you're in the mood for more man-eating goodness, that stuff I said earlier about Cannibalism Week wasn't a Why? joke. We actually have all three Why? channels doing episodes themed around cannibalism. There's one Why? over on Film Theory revisiting an episode I did on Wally's cannibalism. Yes, the Pixar movie and its cannibalistic hidden story. And over on Game Theory, I have three words for you. Human soda cans. It's a game, it is weird, and it is definitely something that you'll want to watch. Both of those episodes are on screen right now. Make sure you click on them. If you're not subscribed to this theory channel, make sure you do before you Subscribe. go. I'll see you all next week. Bon appétit. Uh, thank you all so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you like this video. Why this cannibalism? Come on, like, uh, seriously, have a heart, do your part, save another human being. You are a human being. I'm a human being. Let's save another human being, shall we? <sighs> Anyways, 
And thank you so much. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have any share pass. Don't forget to follow my channel. I hope to see you all in my next video. Thank you so much for the best for being so motiv motivating, encouraging, and just uplifting for my channel. Thank you so much for the best. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Cannibal theory. <laughs> One more time. <clears throat> but hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Thank you. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye. Please remember to subscribe to my channel.